Who's got the greatest kids' animal videos in the whole wide world? Hey, gang, it's me, Spin, your whirling world wanderer. And National Geographic's really wild animal. Each video is jam-packed full of animal action. So hang on tight, because you're in for a really wild ride. <laughs> really wild animals. It's fun. It's new. It's won so many awards, even the critics are roaring. The New York Times says, awe-inspiring. Leonard Malton asks, what could be better? And Parents Magazine calls really wild animals incredible. Ah, this is the life. See for yourself. No one knows animals like National Geographic, and they've made really wild animals more fun than a barrel full of orangutans. There's exciting animation, fantastic live action photography, and outrageous music videos. It's Hound Dog time! Hey dog, I wish I knew why you do those dog things you do. Pick it up, anything you can chew. Hey dog! So stop monkeying around and get ready for National Geographic's Really Wild Animals. Kids videos that have the whole world running wild. Spin you later! All you really wild animals out there, have you ever wondered why are penguins such perfect paddlers? Which pole does a polar bear prefer? How come a walrus has such big teeth? Where do killer whales go for dinner? And why are all these animals wearing white? Well, the answers are all ahead. So, let's hop right in. It's National Geographic's Really Wild Animals. A polar prowl. All right! Hey, compadres, it's me, Spin, your world-wandering wildlife watcher. I hope you've got your mittens because we are headed for the very top and very bottom of the world, the Arctic and the Antarctic. If you think these are the coldest, loneliest places on the planet, you're right. <laughs> but you'll be surprised how full of life they are, with lots of animals found nowhere else in the world. Because they're perfectly at home, right here. Right where? Oh, well, let me show you. Here, around the North Pole, is the Arctic. And... Ooh, here, around the South Pole, is the Antarctic, and we might as well start at the top. Have a look. The Arctic includes most of Greenland, plus the northern parts of Europe, Asia, and North America. But mostly, it's made up of the Arctic Ocean. When you're at the North Pole, you're not standing on land, You're on a huge piece of flat, frozen seawater in the middle of the ocean. Woo! It's called pack ice, and much of it stays frozen all year. And you're looking at the king of the pack ice, the polar bear. These huge bears can weigh as much as 10 grown-up humans. Their thick white fur both keeps them warm and helps hide them from other animals. Even their big paws are padded. Yep, polar bears rule in the cool. Oh, and uh, speaking of cool, 
Yo, cool creatures, it's me, Ice G, with the polar weather wrap. This is summertime on the Arctic Ocean, the middle of July, the ice is in motion. It's not real warm, but it's real, real bright. The sun stays up all day and all night, but winter's on the way, no matter what you say. Darkness is coming for a long, long stay. The ocean's gonna freeze, the storms are gonna wail. Whoever stays around is gonna freeze his tail. So find a warm place to keep yourself in. Before winter hits, it's back to you spin. During the brutal Arctic winter, Male bears live out on the ice. But this female decided on hibernation. That means she dug a den in the snow and spent five months in there, dozing and napping without any food or water. Now winter's over and she's coming out. Ooh, maybe one more nap. Hey, don't forget your foot. But eventually she rises and shines and gets a little luge practice in. Yo, like gnarly muggles, dude! And this is the other thing she did last winter. She gave birth to cubs. For about two weeks, this furry family will stay close to the den. But then, hunger takes over and Mom leads the cubs out into the wide world of ice. There's plenty for this new cub to see. Like this arctic hare, for instance. It also wears white, making it harder to spot. Same deal with this arctic fox. And the snowy owl. All that white fur and feathers helps him blend in with the snow. When you look like what's around you, that's called camouflage. Camouflage helps animals who get hunted and animals who hunt. Around here, that covers most everyone. This cub won't hunt on his own for a long time, but Mom knows that it's never too early to start hunting lessons. <laughs> They've caught a whiff of a nearby harp seal. So, Mom slips into the water and shows Junior how to sneak up on their prey. Mom lies low so the seal won't see her. But, Junior hasn't learned how to sneak yet. Hey, you better hide or that seal's gonna... Ooh, I told you so. Ah, but it's not all Junior's fault. For polar bears, not every hunt ends up with a meal. For about two years, Mom and her cub will stay together until he's old enough to hunt for himself and roam the ice alone. But the polar bear and all the other animals who hang out here in his kingdom don't think the cold is bad at all. Nope. As far as they're concerned, the cold is cool. We're living up here in a big deep freeze. It registers about 30 degrees below zero. It's a typical day for us. We're rolling around across the ice. There's a chill in the air and a shoe feels nice. It's minus 30 Celsius. We like it cold. cold.
Bloomberg a lot. These huge chunks of ice have been breaking off the glaciers like crazy. Look, there goes another one. Aha. Yes, these icebergs look huge. And they are even bigger than they look. Just think, you can see only one-tenth of this iceberg. The rest is underwater. So, be very careful where you steer your boat. Luckily, these humongous frozen chunks don't stay around forever. They gradually get eroded by the water and wind and eventually melt and crumble to pieces. Let's paddle past the pack ice for a peek at some other arctic animals. Woo! <laughs> hey, what's this toothy tribe? Walruses? Look at the size of these guys. All that fat called blubber helps keep the walrus's body heat in and the cold out. That's called insulation. These tusks get bigger as a walrus gets older. And when you've got an itchy flipper, the tusks come in pretty handy. Uh, uh, toothy. <laughs> and look who else is passing through. Killer whales. Despite their name, killer whales are not dangerous to human beings. Salmon? Well, that's another story. Killer whales aren't as big as a lot of other whales, but they can still be twice as long as a car. They travel in big family groups called pods. Every summer, you'll find this pod south of the Arctic, off the Pacific coast of Canada, where they know the salmon will be. The fish are heading back to the rivers and streams where they hatched to lay their eggs. But first, they've got to get past the whales. It's a dangerous trip, indeed. Spread out in a line, the killer whales move through the water. They use sonar to find the fish. That means they send out loud clicks and listen for the sound as it echoes, 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 echoes. off of nearby objects. 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 And there's that special sound. Dinner is served, and the salmon are guests of honor. They are also the main course. But don't worry, most of the fish get away and make it upstream. The killer whales like to follow up dinner with a nice back rub. No one's sure why they rub themselves on these shallow rocky bottoms near the shore. My guess? They do it because it feels good. Okay, enough of this paddling around. Let's head for solid ground. And in the far north, a lot of the solid ground is tundra. What's tundra? Cold, treeless land where the deep down earth stays frozen all the time. But in the spring, the top few inches thaw and the tundra turns into a green, marshy place where thousands of animals come to raise their young and find food. Like these big deer, called caribou. Every spring, thousands of them leave their winter homes in the forests of Alaska. They're on their way to the tundra on the coastal plain. That's this northern edge of land, right near the ocean more than 350 miles away. When animals travel like this, it's called migration. Why migrate? To find food and a place to have a baby, which, in the caribou's case, is called a calf. See, there are lots of wolves and bears who might just want to eat a young caribou. 
So when it's time to have calves, the caribou move from the woods to the tundra, where there's plenty of food and it's easier to see their enemies. Two months after starting the trip, the females take a short break and it's baby time! <laughs> All the calves in the herd are born within a few days of each other, which makes it very easy to remember their birthdays. In minutes, the brand new caribou are up and walking or uh, swimming. And they'd better be, because even when the herd reaches the coastal plain, they don't stop moving around. They've always got to find that next patch of grass. And just when they thought it was safe to graze and relax, mosquitoes. They hatch in the spring, too. And sometimes they swarm so fiercely that the caribou can't stop to eat. Ah. Would you run into icy water to escape the biting bugs? The caribou do. A lot of the mosquitoes get eaten by visiting birds. Live by the bite, die by the beak. Do you think the caribou had a long trip? Well, that was nothing compared to some of the birds around here. This golden plover flew all the way from South America to lay her eggs on the tundra. And these snow geese flapped north from Texas and California. They've all come for the plentiful food and nesting space. Of course, they can't stay up here year round because it gets way too cold. So when the temperatures start dropping, the birds migrate south. Only the toughest characters live on the tundra year-round. No, these are not buffaloes with wigs. They are musk oxen. And if you lived here all winter, you'd want hair like that to keep you warm. All the winter, they survive by eating plants under the snow called lichens. Now it's summer and they're fattening up on grass and getting into the occasional fight over females. Ooh, ouch! Let's watch that again. <laughs> oh, ah! Don't try this at home, kids. It's always better to negotiate. It's getting chilly. Let's stop by my favorite Alaskan island. Kodiak Island is a bit south of the Arctic. Most places in Alaska are cold, 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 but a warm ocean current keeps Kodiak's weather mild for much of the year. And that's just fine with these Kodiak bears. They don't live on the ice like their polar bear cousins, but they do hibernate. These cubs were born in their mom's den over the winter. Now it's spring, and this mom is giving her cubs lessons, like how to cross the stream. Cubs learn by example. Mom can't tell them what to do, so she shows them, and they imitate her. Though this guy seems to be chickening out. Oh, I guess he just wanted to find a shortcut. <laughs> Next lesson. How to fish. The salmon have finally arrived after their long journey. Just in time to worry about bears and all of the other animals up here who like to eat fish. Some work hard for their meal. Others, like this lucky fox, let it come to them. For all kinds of bears, catching slippery salmon is no easy feat. I mean, <laughs> no easy call. <laughs> Whoa! Oops, watch your step. Salmon steaks will help the bears put on the fat they need for nourishment and insulation throughout the long winter. And now a word from your fat cells. Need to put on weight? Feel like everyone pushes you around? Huh. Workouts just not working out? Well, get ready to get 
gargantuan! It's the Brown Bear Fast Fat Food Feast Diet Plan! Follow it for a few months and you'll put on hundreds of pounds of fat just in time for hibernation! It's easy! Stuff your face with salmon skin, fill up on fish brains, binge on berries till you bust! Just pick out on anything you can put your paws on. It's all loaded with calories to give you extra warmth and energy. So if you can't bear being skinny, go for a new you! Act now and get free hairy ears! Of course, you shouldn't eat that way, but for bears, all that gorging is important. During their winter hibernation, they'll have to live off the fat they store up now. It's just one more way to stay alive in the super cold. Some animals hibernate like the bears. Some migrate like the caribou or the birds. Some insulate like the walruses and seals. In fact, most do more than one. When the season up here starts changing We've got to do some rearranging When the cold gets colder still This is how we beat the winter chill Some of us migrate Some of us hibernate migrating record holder of them all, the Arctic Tern. Twice a year, some of these little birds make an 11,000 mile trip between the Arctic and the Antarctic. Because when it's winter way down south, it's summer way up north. And when it's winter way up north, it's summer way down south. So the terns are actually following summer from one end of the earth to the other. <laughs> Hope we don't make a wrong turn. Ha <laughs> ha! Get it? Turn! Come on, folks, these are the jokes. Tough crowd. Through the wonders of animation, we are making the three-month trip in just a few seconds. Hello down there. We're coming in for a landing. Ha <laughs> ha! Here, around the South Pole, is the continent of Antarctica. Have a look. This icy continent is bigger than the United States. And it is a continent. Under all that ice and snow is a huge mass of land. The world's c c c coldest temperature was recorded here. 129 degrees below zero. Talk about long underwear. If you like ice, you're going to love it here. In fact, nine-tenths of the snow and ice on Earth is right here in Antarctica. 
Life on land is so tough that most animals spend lots of time in the water, only coming on shore to rest or have babies, including Antarctica's most famous residents. <laughs> Here they are now, folks, the penguins! If you thought these black and white birds lived near the North Pole, you thought wrong. They only live in the southern half of the Earth. There are more than 15 different kinds or different species of penguins. These are Adélie penguins. They live closer to the South Pole than any other penguin species. They're little, but they're tough. It's October, early spring in Antarctica, and time for these penguins to start raising families. The males come ashore first, ever so gracefully. <laughs> Each male quickly claims a nesting area, then calls for his mate. Okay, so all neighbors bicker a little. What do they use to build their nests? Well, there's not much choice, really. The hunt is on for the best pebbles on the beach. Once the rock nests are built, the females move in and lay their eggs. Those rocks may not look comfortable, but they'll keep the eggs dry. It's been nearly a month since the penguins have eaten. After all, nobody delivers pizza in Antarctica. <laughs> so the males take over exiting, and the females head back to the sea to feed. Penguins do almost everything in groups, and that includes fishing for food. Come on, last one in is a rotten egg. All penguins look clumsy on land, but graceful in the water. Their wings flap like flippers, and their feet steer them like a rudder. A layer of fat covered with thick feathers keeps them warm in the icy sea. There's that insulation again. Once they've filled up on seafood, the female Adelis cruise back onto land. Blasting out of the water because this hungry leopard seal wants penguin salad for lunch. They waddle back to their nests, take over egg duties, and the hungry dads head off to find their own dinner. In about three weeks, the eggs hatch, and Mom is ready to feed her chicks some pre-swallowed seafood. Yuck! That's called regurgitation. They eat it right out of Mom's mouth. It may seem gross to you and me, but how else can Mom carry fish for miles without any pockets? Both Moms and Dads feed chicks this way. Hey! Come back with that food! Soon, the penguins will head out to sea for the winter. But, before that happens, another flock of Adelis gets some human visitors. Meet the Ponce family, out on their summer vacation. For the past month, Dion, Leaf, and DT have been sailing around Antarctica with their parents. Their mom is a scientist who studies penguins. By estimating how many penguins are in a penguin colony, the Ponces can learn whether the population is increasing or decreasing. Today's homework, count penguins. Tomorrow's homework, count penguins. The next day, you guessed it. After they've said goodbye to the waddling birds, the family explores. And what do they come across? <laughs> a crab-eater seal, chilling on an ice floe. Lots of seals live down here, like this Waddell seal. Check out all that blubber and fur. She has insulated herself, but good! Like the penguins, Waddell seals raise their young during the short Antarctic summer. But seals aren't birds, they're mammals. That means they feed milk 
to their babies, just like humans do. Seal milk is so fatty, it's almost like drinking butter. Will little Willie Waddell fatten up fast enough to survive his first winter? Well, let's just skip ahead a few days and see. There we are. One week old and Willie is positively plump. Time for his first swimming lesson. Mum shows Willie how to dive in and he discovers the wondrous world under the ice. In winter, Waddell seals survive by spending almost all their time in the water. Unfrozen salt water always stays around 30 degrees. Lots warmer than the air outside, which can get as cold as 60 degrees below zero. To make sure they can get out of the water to breathe and rest, the seals keep holes open by chewing the ice. Ooh, my teeth hurt just watching. Things are really freezing up around here. Let's cruise out of Antarctica and visit a few other parts of the cold, cold south. Like the Snares Islands. Just south of New Zealand. Remember those Adelie penguins on the ice? Well, up here they've got a group of cousins who live a very different lifestyle. Are you a penguin who's tired of living on ice? Do you long for a place in the woods with an ocean view? Well, the home of your dreams is waiting just for you on lovely Snares Island. If you prefer mud and muck to snow and ice, then you must check out this little piece of paradise. Just ask these Snares Island penguins and their cheerful chicks. Each and every one of them will agree. A home in the goo is just the place for you. What is it about penguins? They've got charm, they've got style. Penguins. And most of all, they really know how to dress. It'll be a black and white affair. We're inviting friends from everywhere. We'll serve a seafood dish. How about some tasty fish? You know the very best dress will be there. We're expecting Emperor, King, Chin, Strap, Gen 2, Macaroni, Rock, Hopper. That's you, New Zealand's Fjordland, and Snares Island, just to name a few. We'll be slipping, sliding on a block of ice To a penguin it feels oh so nice Everybody loves to swim, form a line and dive on in It's a penguin's paradise We're expecting black-footed, yellow-eyed, royal, a daily Erect, crested, and little blue South America's humble, Galapagos, Magellanic Hey fella, that's you! Penguin, where you been? Down to the water and back again. Wave those flippers, waddle those feet. There's a party on Penguin Street! Emperor, King, Chin, Strap, Gen 2, Macaroni, Rock, Hopper. That's you, New Zealand's Fjordland and Snares Island, just to name a few. Black-footed, yellow-eyed, royal, a daily, erect, crested, Let's float to the Falkland Islands and see whose flippers are flapping. The Falkland Islands are a little bit north of the Antarctic of South America. And there he is now, 
the glamour boy of the Falklands, the fur seal. Handsome fellow, huh? Check out that hair on the male. It's called a mane, just like the hair on a lion. People used to hunt these guys for their fur. Much like me, they were <laughs> too handsome for their own god. And the females are plenty cute too. Smooth, golden, and about half the size of the males. So much for glamour. It's on to yet another seal species, the elephant seals. You can't accuse them of getting by on their good looks. <laughs> or their lovely voices, for that matter. Look at that nose. These huge Omungo males are staying out of the water while they shed their old skin. <laughs> okay, if that happens to you, you might get a little itchy and cranky. Now imagine if on top of that, little tussock birds came along and started picking at your dead, shedding skin so that they could eat the bugs that live in it. You might get sort of grumpy, right? Maybe we ought to leave these fellas alone. They're having a rough day. Hold it! We've been all over the far south and we haven't met its most important resident. Drum roll, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Krill! Huh? Okay, these little shrimp-like sea creatures aren't glamorous. They are not Hunky. They aren't dashing. But I'll tell you what they are. Food! There are billions of these teensy guys in the southern seas. The biggest are as small as your little finger. And nearly all the other animals here eat them. Penguins. Other birds. Whales. Seals. Fish. They all eat krill. And when animals eat other animals that eat krill, that's called the food chain. In a place as tough as Antarctica, the animal at the base of the food chain keeps everyone else alive. So, let them know you care, folks! Krill! Hey, it's the Ponces! They're still cruising the Antarctic shores. Now, instead of wee little penguins, they're visiting huge big mammals, humpback whales. Humpbacks are a much bigger species than killer whales. Fully grown, they can be longer than a school bus and three times as heavy. This pod of humpbacks is here for the summer. Even though they are gigundous, humpbacks eat only krill and very small fish. And they've found a really smart way to round up lunch. They dive down deep, then spiral back to the surface, blowing bubbles as they go. The krill swim upward to get away from the bubbles. The whales follow them up and eat them. <laughs> That's called bubble netting. Open wide. <laughs> your mum doesn't like you to eat with your mouth open. But I guess it's okay if you're a humpback. And now, what have our intrepid travellers discovered? An old whaling boat. Years ago, people hunted whales for their oil and meat. In some countries, they still do. Because of the hunting, many kinds of whales nearly became extinct, which means they almost died out altogether. Today, many countries have stopped whaling. Where ships used to hunt whales, now people like the Ponces are sailing to try and help these gentle creatures. Since humans endangered the whales, it's up to humans to help save them. You can help by letting other people know that you care what happens to these amazing mammal friends of ours. 
from huge whales to tiny krill. The animals that live in the Arctic and Antarctic are pretty incredible. And the more you learn about these creatures, the more amazing they become. In the most remote places on Earth, these animals have found ingenious ways to survive. Long migrations over hundreds of miles. Chowing down and fattening up to insulate. Staying in the water to keep from freezing. And hibernating through the toughest winters. To these cool and courageous characters, the coldest places on earth aren't forbidding and lonely. They're just home. Like a blanket of white The southern end of the world What an awesome sight It's Antarctica Where the rocky cliffs sit proud and high And glaciers reach up toward the sky Antarctica, you are the last great wilderness On solid ground Might be frozen ocean Looking farther down There's a world of blue Where the humpbacks and killer whales are free To explore the sights of the southern sea Antarctica, you are the last great whale So easily Can we let it be See the southern lights Cast a glow above the horizon And the birds in flight Over Antarctica Majestic sights of earth and sea Just the way it was meant to be Protect this fragile land Antarctica, you are the last great wilderness Antarctica Well gang, it's been a great adventure Exploring the Arctic and Antarctic with you there are lots more really wild animals all across this wonderful world of ours. So be sure to join me on our next adventure. Until then, this is your pal Spin. Spin you later. Antarctica.
enjoyed this presentation from the National Geographic Video Library.